Ladies and gentlemen, filmmakers and moviegoers alike, welcome to this week's episode of Quick the Casual. I'm your host, Recuff. Joining me, as always, is the amazing Dorky Dev. Hi, Dev. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? I'm doing pretty good this morning. I actually feel rested for once. Strangely. Congrats. Yeah. Hey, it happens sometimes for some people. Yay. <laughs> Uh, My sleep schedule's no longer fucked, so... That's good. Yay. That is good. You just needed yeah, you... one long day of sleep, and you were fine. Yeah, apparently. You know, after being fucked since last week. Mm-hmm. Because it's totally my fault. Yes. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, completely. So Steve, No, Stephen, if I trace it back... There's one event. Yeah, and it's my that... fault. Yeah, totally. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not taking responsibility for your sleep schedule. <laughs> I'm sorry. We watched one movie, and, like, I hadn't slept for 72 or t- two hours after that. Slept for, like, five after that. And then couldn't sleep for another two days. Um, Yeah, totally my fault. <laughs> I actually just got done watching that movie again last night. It was good. <laughs> I'm saying it's not. I'm just saying, you know, it's the common correlation between, you know, my sleep schedule been be getting fucked up. Mm. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, anything else you want to talk about before we get into the movie? Um, yeah, you know, it's just, it's a real shame. What? It's a real shame? What's a real shame? The movies, they're a real shame. <laughs> but you can't take responsibility. Oh, okay. <laughs> I instantly... Oh, so everybody, happy Pride Month. Uh, I know yes. we're late in the sense of, like, normally we would have been live uh, in May, and next week would have been, like, hey, happy Pride Month, but now mm-hmm. we're live a little bit in June. So it still counts as our May show, but whatever. <laughs> but yeah. Which, Steven, I'm going to message you in Discord. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no. Just, just, just keep doing the show. All right, fine. Um, but yeah, and uh, happy Pride Month, and we will. Uh, I thought we already decided that last week. Did we? What do we decide it? <laughs> Crank. Oh right, yeah, we're doing that, aren't we? Yeah, Crank and Crank too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny. (laughs) Sorry, I could have replied, but just rather say it and just get it out of the way. Um, Fair enough. I I completely forgot that conversation. (laughs) I don't blame you. It was kind of (laughs) silly. Either way, let's get in here. Let's start talking about this week's movies, which this week I have decided to call it... uh, Oh, I forgot to change the title. God damn it. <laughs> uh, I here I I even got two extra days to fix it. And I completely missed it. Well, shit. We're calling this one Top Fun. Top Fun? That's boring. <laughs> Fine. Everyone will you know that's a dev you title. Did, yeah, you didn't come up with one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I had a clever idea. Why didn't I write it down? Shame. Oh, well. We're talking Top Gun and then Top Gun Maverick. <laughs> Let's get in here. We're going to start talking about our first movie, because words are hard. Uh, Let's start talking about Top Gun. Which was released on May 16th of 1986. With a budget of $15 million, Odin oh, Wigan made $8 million. Gross world, uh, gross US it made 180 million, and worldwide 357 million. And you know, this movie is a cultural moment. Yes, <laughs> it is. Even if you haven't seen it, you've seen it. You know. Yeah, it's been referenced like, and talked about a million times over the last 40 years. Basically, it's it it has impact, dude. You own a pair of aviators. 
because of this movie. <laughs> I'm not fucking around. Like, it literally is the reason why you probably own a pair of aviators. Because this movie came out, and it made them fucking cool. I mean, this movie came out, and it just made fighter pilots cool. Like, if I remember right, in 1987, the year after this movie came out, like, the recruitment rate for naval aviators went up, like, 400%, because they just thought, wow, that was cool. Mm-hmm. Because they had recruitment booths in the theater. Mm-hmm. And yes, this movie is some of the most imperialistic propaganda that has ever been put onto a fucking movie. But fuck, is it fucking cool, though. <laughs> it has some cool moments, a lot of fun dialogue, and it's very Chemistry quirky. amongst everybody. Yeah, it's, it has a lot to appreciate. There are there is a couple things you could also critique about it too, but that's fine. But if you're having fun with this movie, like you can't at the same time. You know sure what I mean? You can. Like, this movie doesn't even have a seven on IMDb. <laughs> so I don't give a shit what the critics say. This movie's fucking perfect. Okay, I'm sorry. Like, dude. Like, okay. Let's just be real. Kelly McGin- uh, McGinnis and Tom Cruise's chemistry in this movie is disgustingly palpable Mm -hmm. like it's just as their relationship builds throughout the movie i'm like god damn it just get a fucking room please (laughs) you're it makes me sick you two but it's so good they're so good Mm -hmm. and like val coomer is fantastic as ice because he's the bad guy but he's not a bad guy no he's like he's a kid i always thought he was the bad guy but then watching it as an adult i'm like He's, Dude, right. he's just watching out for people. Yeah, he's he Val Kilmer and Iceman <laughs> as Iceman is completely right. He's like because ultimately what ends up happening is because of not quite because of irresponsibility, but you know, their mistakes are made and uh all of that could have been avoided. I mean, in that scenario it's no one's fault either. No, um but yes and no. <laughs> well, he it wasn't his fault. Um in that scene, mm-hmm. because you can't see the jet wash, mm-hmm. um, and in that scenario, Ice needed to break off sooner. Yes, um, like it's, uh, the, the, they're both of them the are definitely at fault there. I for, like there's a lot to talk about for sure. We without trying to spoil it. <laughs> um, forty year old movie, but still. like, yeah. Well, in my opinion, I don't think uh, Mav is in, at fault for that one because like. In that scenario, he's doing everything right. He's got his shot lined up and everything, um, because that's what you're supposed to do. If if it's two on one, you're supposed to be the you know if the first misses, you've got to be ready to take that shot as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was ready, but you couldn't get a clear shot. You can't shoot with your fucking wingman right in front of you. Yeah. So, um, no, and, and that's and it's also not a hundred percent you know Iceman's fault either. It's exactly. either of their yeah. fault. So like it just. You know, it happens. Um, Anthony Edwards is fantastic as Goose. Like, dude, it's the heart of the fucking movie. Um, it's just, dude, this movie is fucking good. Like, I I forgot how fun this movie is. Because um, it's been a long time since I've watched it. And it's just like, fucking Meg Ryan is in this movie. And, like... At the at, at the point of like probably during her like peak, if I remember correctly. Hold on, let me scroll down to nineteen eighty six. Uh, she had just done. Oh, she it was. Oh, it was right before she probably got into uh, some of her big things. So like, mm-hmm. her career took off in eighty eight, basically. Yeah. Nineteen eighty nine, when Harry met Sally. Um. Yeah, like she like. Fucking make Ryan's in this, and she's not even the biggest like name in it. And this is before Tom was fucking Tom Cruise. All mm-hmm. right. Um. So like, dude, it's just this movie is fucking fun. I still will always have a heart for it as much, uh, even as a fucking lefty, and I hate you know the imperialistic force of America. There's something really cool about this fucking movie, and I hate it for it, but mm-hmm. I love it. So. I have a question for you, Dev. Yeah. Who are the bad guys? Doesn't matter. It's a timeless thing. It could be anybody. There you go. 
correct answer. Commies. <laughs> Fucking commies. <laughs> but there is no answer. There's never a state or country named, I think, in this movie for who the bad guys are. They just put the red star on it to make you think that it implies Russia during the Cold War. Which is fun. But it never says a thing, so it's like, who could they be? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, well, that's what kind of makes it timeless, you know? In some ways. Yeah. Like, uh, sure, it's stuck, it's stuck in the 80s in the, in the sense of, like, how it is. But, like, it's a timeless enemy. Like, we don't have, like, a definitive enemy in it. Mm -hmm. It's not like um, the Wolverines, where it's definitely Russia. <laughs> yeah. Or, uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, the Red Dawn, uh, Red Dawn right? Mm -hmm. No. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think it's Red Dawn. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah, Red Dawn, because yeah. it was remade in um, 2012 with Chris Hemsworth in it and Josh Peck. <laughs> That'd be a fun combo doing both of those. But, um, um, yeah, this movie's just a lot of fucking fun. It's a little fun, yeah. I, I agree with you. I'm just kidding. It is fun. It, there's a lot of fun moments. There's a lot of great character development. A lot of good... Well, not necessarily great character development, but there's definitely good character moments. That's 100%. I think correct. there's good development for Mav. Yeah. Being the main character, absolutely. Just needed. Mm -hmm. it, um, go ahead. Sorry. My one complaint, I do have one complaint, is the ending of the movie. Because the whole movie is this fun, not-so-fun emotional character driven time through a school where yes awesome action awesome jet scenes are happening from time to time not very often but they're happening and um then suddenly it's like oh we've graduated how do we end the movie we have a bad guy to fight let's go <laughs> and i know they're like hinted at at the very beginning of the film but it's literally the very first scene and the very last scene is that fight i guess is the best way to put it and i feel like it's kind of just tacked on there to try and give the movie a climactic ending eh. i'm i mean it doesn't bug me because you know i'm a sucker for it <laughs> so you know it is what it is i get it i get your complaint but uh meh doesn't bug me, so. Um, this movie has the greatest soundtrack of all time, right? Uh, I would say, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's, I don't <laughs> know. Um, you've got, you know, Danger Zone, Mighty Wings. I mean, Take My Breath Away. Like, the moment Take My Breath Away plays, Dude, anyway. That... And I've jokingly used this already <clears throat> in RP as a mm -hmm. joke after watching it. with Because uh, my character's dating now, so, like, mm -hmm. I jokingly grabbed a boombox and started playing it. But the moment you hear the, like, beginning of it. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. But and you're like, Take My Breath Away. It's just so, like, what a fucking ballad. <laughs> I mean, yes, it is. But God, at the same time, like, it's tw almost 15 minutes of just that one chorus repeating over and over and over again. Because the Steven, love scene has to be all crammed in at this moment. Steven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they made these songs, like, most of the, the, like, licensed music of this movie were made originally for this movie. Mm-hmm. So, like, also, what a fucking start. Like, that fucking beginning scene where it's just kind of building, and then all of a sudden, just, like, fucking Danger Zone just rips in, and you're like, okay, I'm fucking ready. Let's do this. Oh. God damn. <laughs> the no. Danger Zone. The soundtrack of this song is, like, the most iconic part of this movie for me. It's just quintessentially 80s. And it gets the vibe and the theme, and it's what really... Like, music and movies are what really... It, the sound design is what really gets movies, I feel. <clears throat> it's the emotion that captures you. I mean, don't get me wrong. I prefer the cinematography, but sound design is a close second. And, uh... 
It's just the music really gets you in the mood well, yeah. the and theme, like, and, like yeah like like the theme itself you know the you're like dude how do you not get pumped mm-hmm. hearing that every time it comes on you're like <laughs> you're not human because <laughs> dude it's just like the moment it starts you're like oh fuck i'm just you get, I get chills, man, every time. It's just it, this mo- I grew up on this movie, okay? Like I really did. My mom, the only person I know who's seen it more times than me is my mom, because she's been alive since it's been out. Like <laughs> she was a teenager when it came out, so like of course she's seen it more often than me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like <laughs> my my dad was literally when I was sitting in the living room watching it. He was in the other room and just behind the behind the car, just in the other room, just like saying the lines as they're happening because he's seen the movie so many times growing up as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I I fucking grew up on this with on the VHS of this. I'm surprised it still worked because my mom would put it on all the time. So like, it's just it's it's a fucking classic and it does everything you want it to do because it do, it doesn't need to be. You know, some crazy character-driven story. It needs to do because this movie also did some of the cr- the the craziest things ever done in a jet mm-hmm. recording-wise. To the point that, like, there was a guy who died on the set of this because he got into a flat spin, um, which you know is an important part of this movie. Um, this movie is practical all the way through, and it's crazy to see it. So I do have one question for you, Dev, which I feel is kind of important based off of your critiques of other movies in the past. Yes. How do you feel about this movie and its, um, and its thoughts of women? <laughs> oh, it doesn't pass the Bechtel test to save its. Lo- oh no, it no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't pass the Bechtel test at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say it makes the women very terrible people, like very terrible. They're not characters. They're... No, I mean, I think Charlie's a character um, in the sense that like, because like if this was a normal 80s movie, let's say she would have just given in right away. But like there's she's. There's there's build up to it, OK, in a way, which is more yes. than. Which is more than a lot of 80 movies would have done. You're not wrong. <laughs> it, like, I'm not yes to say that now. you're not... You're, you're not wrong either, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, that, like, it is kind of lame that um, Carrie McGinnis Gillis is only given the, like, the, the role of love interest. Which is an ungrateful role to be just thrown into, okay? Let's be real. And the 80s was full of it. Um... But for its time, it's honestly not the worst. Mm-hmm. Um, not saying it's a good thing. Just saying that, like we've there are there are worse movies that handle love interests. Um, it, I don't necessarily think it's a bad like love interest, like how he treats love interests. I just think how they treat women in general in this movie. Oh uh, yes, I agree one hundred percent. It's like, like even if you watch, if watch, watch. Uh, cinema wins. Uh, Top Gun. I was about to say, are you gonna talk? I I are, I was gonna talk about the um, um the her introduction is interesting yes. just because yes. of how he sees her. It's not like he knows it's her right away. The first thing he sees is her legs, and that's all he cares about. And he's like, hey, yeah, damn, that's hot. But also a really funny thing in that scene though is that like. When she turns around, Goose takes off his aviators, mm. and uh, Mav puts his on. This I did notice when that. But... When when she meets them in the bar, <laughs> it's the opposite. <laughs> so, like, when Mav does this, Goose goes, and Mav sees it and goes. <laughs> because, yeah, when the singing happens, he was glasses and the other guy was not. Yes. Though, Goose with his iconic mustache, there's no way you're going to be able to miss that. Like, come on. <laughs> Still, 
I love like little details like that. But no, I agree that like it's there's very much a uh, you know, there's it's there's some, you know, fucking bullshit of, you know, it being it being an 80s movie, okay? Like but I just some of her dialogue too is just like I just I couldn't let the others know that I have fallen for you. Just, <sighs> if, yeah, I'm not arguing with some of that. I'm just saying, you know, like We've seen worse. Let's see here. Um, I mean, still, you're not. It's still a very enjoyable film. There's yes. a lot of quirkiness to it. That's fine. Let's see what else I talk about. I don't know. It's just a good, enjoyable, like, movie that stands out definitely from the late 80s. I've seen it a million times, and I'll probably watch it a million more. <laughs> so fucking good. This is, this is one of those movies that, like, has always impacted me as growing up. It will always impact me. Hmm. The one Before. thing I, I wonder about too, I don't see many people who talk about it. Like they talk about it as like a message in the movie a little bit more like the being told to let go, but they don't really talk about the like awful part about that. Like they gloss over the fact that all these military people are like, yeah, people just die. This is how it is here. We accept that it's eventuality. The, it's the reality of the military. Yeah. It's just like, it kind of sucks. I like that's something more. It is the reality of the military, yes. But, like, I just think that's awful that we force. I mean, we don't necessarily force some people. Some people volunteer for this shit. Eh, is it volunteering if it's your only option to potentially, you know, get a higher uh, country that's you know forcing you to do it yeah you know what I mean? yeah <laughs> still consider me forcing but i digress on that point yeah i mean yes and no since i kind of brought up the point anyways <laughs> i consider it still forced to do it Due to the fact we propagandized the entire thing. Like, the fact that, like, this movie, you know, made people want to join the military. And on top of that, like, we don't exactly give people a lot of options uh, mm -hmm. here to, uh, you know, make it. Um, you know, it's, uh, I would consider that pretty well a, uh, pretty well being forced to do it. I remember uh, just a little side tangent here. After I gra <clears throat> after I graduated high school, I got a bunch of messages from uh, recruiters and a bunch of random calls, and it was ridiculous because um, they just wouldn't leave me alone. And one day I was like, "Okay, you want to recruit me? Let's go through the checklist. What are these things that I have to be able to do?" And they're like, "Well, do you have these medical problems?" I was like, "Yes, I do." And they're like, "Oh, okay." Well, you can get past that with a doctor's note. And then they went on. Do you have this medical problem? Yes, I do. Oh, well, you can get past that with a doctor's note. And it's like they come up with all these excuses for you to be able to still join the military. The only one, the one that actually got them to stop messaging me was I told them I'm 100 pounds overweight. And they're like, oh, well, OK, have a good day. <laughs> As someone who almost was in the military, uh... Yeah, dude, it, they're fucking relentless on that shit. After I kind of, I didn't flunk out. It was more that, you know, I just, I, when I, I've explained a little bit. I just, I wasn't able to get through me, into MEPS because of just like one event. After that, my recruiter still was like, hey, when are you coming back? When are we getting you through all this again? After spending a, like almost two years doing that shit. Mm -hmm. No. I wasn't going back. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that shit, I'm out. Pretty much. 
Uh, that's fun. Gotta love the U.S. military. Dude, um, Monday, Memorial Day, I, um, I had to do the Pledge of Allegiance for the first time since, like, middle school. So I don't remember having to do it in high school. <laughs> but... <No. laughs> Even middle school, I don't remember having to do it much. Yeah, but it was literally the a Boy Scout troop at this concert that I was performing at with the local community band. They did a Memorial Day event, and the Boy Scout troop was like, all right, everyone stand. We're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, the mic fucking camera. <sighs> We're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance. And, uh, yeah, I was like, really? We're, we're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Sure. I was all for the national anthem, but like, Pledge? Yup. Because I pledge to be indoctrinated since I was in elementary. I mean, you did pledge that back then, you know? Uh -huh. That was that was your choice, you know. No one else's, only yours. And then the Dude freaking not to. And then the mall that I work at, the J.C. Penny, all of them started playing like American music. I'm proud to be an American. That kind of music, like oh god, what's happening? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what year is it? <laughs> it's just it's it's just how we do things here it is. Steven how American yeah, is this uh, movie? extremely <laughs> yep so Dev I think we're good here I can give you your popcorn kernels right yes okay you got 10 of them are you giving all 10 to Top Gun Maverick or Top Gun, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel bad about it a little bit on this one, because, like... <laughs> <laughs> it's just... I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm disappointing a little bit, because, like, I'm... This year I've been giving out a lot of tens. <laughs> <laughs> Because like we did uh, scream the Batman, unbelievable, uh, unbearable weight of massive talent in the Northmen. Are we gonna have a year where you actually give an overall higher score than I do? I think so. Oh. <laughs> Which is kind of shocking because usually mine are more. Mind you, I've given I I've given you know a point five and a one already this year. So like also true. We've had a very polarizing year for you. But more highs but overall, than I feel like I've had more me medium to highs than low. I haven't really been grading under a five lately. So that's the one thing I always kind of enjoy, like over the last few years when you actually started doing the stat stuff, I've enjoyed being like hearing how every week's like, Steven, you're so negative. God, why? Why are you so mean to all the movies? And then at the end of the year, I have a higher score than you do on average. <laughs> yeah, because like when we when we grade when we watch bad movies, I'm ruthless to them. <laughs> Look at you, like the monster hunters that we've watched. You know, like we've watched some bad movies, and so they deserve my ire. <laughs> um, and those are what throw my score off entirely because like it's just like my like because you sit in the same like ballpark like five point range. Yeah, I'm somewhere between four and eight basically yes yes we'll go like 3.5 to 8.5 yeah um that's about your range if you go above that something's like the movie has been spectacular if you go below that the movie fucked up um I but even then some of your like worst movies you maybe only give a three I, for, I think my first really low score was the week we had jay in with us and that what i think was a three i think was First time I did a score that low. Well, me, I'm willing to just literally swing one way or the other, depending on the mm -hmm. movie. I had to yell at you not to give Death Note a zero. Like, I told you, not allowed. 
<laughs> yeah, because, you know, and that is the rule. We're not allowed to give it a zero, but damn, damn if I won't at least give it as low as I can. Yeah, a point five. They made it. That's all they get. <laughs> yeah. They gave some people some money. There you go. Yeah, a 10 for you. I'm going to give this movie an 8. Fair. I thought so. A 9. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to force you to give it higher because I know I am being very biased and nostalgic driven, but fuck it. I'm okay with that. So. All right. Are we ready for the next one? I'm ready for the next one. All right, let's get in here. We're going to start talking about Top Gun Maverick. Which was released May 24th, or 27th, uh, 2022, with an uh, opening weekend of $126 million. It uh, has so far grossed in the U.S. $176 million, and worldwide is $321 million. Um, so it's made the first movie's budget back. Uh, it, I mean, it's made the first mo movie's, like, um, gross income. Mm -hmm. already so like damn that's pretty impressive <clears throat> so that's happened already um on honestly i'm listening this movie is a really good sequel i agree and I... dude some of the fucking shots in this movie are fucking breathtaking there's a lot of, like, I love the gift that you used for the tweet. Like, that one, that's one of my, there's a lot of really cool scenes in this movie. Like, you can genuinely feel, like they said, they're trying to feel the speed and the action and, the, like, the weight. And you can. And uh -huh. it's, it's because of how they filmed it, too. Because, like, they some of it was practically, a good portion of it was practically done. They weren't all actually, like, flying jet planes. Except for maybe Tom. Yeah, he may who... have flown a plane, uh, jet in like one or two, but he didn't actually fly an F eighteen. I don't think. I think he might have. I don't. I I know he was in them because they had the two passenger system. So the, the I, I know... think he was in like he was piloting. I don't think so because he learned how to pilot those. I don't believe the military let Tom Cruise fly an F eighteen. But I will find out. Let's see. Let's see. Apparently. Oh, I have trivia here, too. I have yeah, some... I see it on, like, it says here on... Some websites that Tom Cruise insisted that he did fly the jet, but there's numerous like there's uh, luxury launches, there is uh, Screen Rant, there's News Weekly, there's uh, Eurasian Times. They all say that he was not actually allowed to pilot the F-18. Fair enough, but still, I mean... It says the beauty is that the shots are really with Tom Cruise in the backseat of the F-18, not actually piloting it. He's being piloted by a genuine naval AV. Fair enough. Still looks fucking awesome. Yeah, and I think that's what happens in most of this movie, is they're in the back seat, but they slightly edit it to look like it's the front seat. And uh, they do have a cockpit... That looks like an F-18 cockpit with a blue screen for, like, the pickup shots that they need. But it all still looks really cool because they're all in a jet. They're all being recorded while being flung around in these high-G maneuvers. 
stuff actually mm-hmm. happens. Like there's a scene where Rooster falls out of like falls and hits his head on the canopy, and that actually happens because they didn't tighten down the harnesses enough, and they kept it in the movie because they thought, hey, that looks cool. I think Dang. the the one of the opening scenes in this movie where no the opening scene where he flies over the guy standing on the road and the, the roof of the building comes off. I don't think that was intentional either, but that was amazing. That was like my oh, favorite part of fantastic. the thing. Yeah. <laughs> that was really cool to see. Just like, whoo, like, yeah. And of course, like I just, the beginning of the movie I thought was cool. And, um, and it made sense to me in a way that they almost had it like that super jet vibe kind of thing. Of course, He's there, and then from the like how the rest of the movie continues, it's good. I like the school. I like all the actors and the students that we get. I love the character dynamics that we have again. It was fun. But my favorite thing is the fact that the conflict is actually like portrayed throughout the entire movie. Like that's the reason they're going to school. Not they're going to school because they want to be better pilots, and then then there's a conflict. It's now the conflict is why they're training. And then once the training's done, they get to the conflict at the end of the movie, which is a much more cohesive A to B plot line. And that just, to me, makes it so much better. Plus, just the, like you said earlier with the action stuff, the jet planes and the flips and the awesome shit that's happening. Really fucking cool. And still, the awesome 80s music. It's back. <laughs> and it fucking works, dude. It fucking pulls its goddamn weight in this movie. Mm-hmm. Oh. God damn. Um, and like the cast does a fucking fantastic. I like Miles Teller is a fantastic actor. Um, and he does a great job in this movie as well. Um, we do have two uh, Marvel connections as well with uh, Jennifer Connelly. Um, who might she be in the world of Marvel? You might be wondering because, you know, I don't remember seeing her in any Marvel movies. That's because you haven't seen her in a Marvel movie. Oh, really? But you've heard her as Suit Lady. Sunday <laughs> or Monday? <laughs> uh, not, no, no, Karen Mm-mm. in Spider Man's suit. Spider Man Homecoming. Um, cool. And then also, uh, Danny Ramirez um, was in uh, The Falcon and Winter Soldier as Joaquin Torres, um, who I believe is supposed to be the next Falcon. Oh, he's the okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, in this movie, he plays um fanboy. So, just a little bit for you. Cool. Mhm, mhm. So, yeah, no, I uh like this movie's fucking cool. Damn it, I hate, I hate how cool it was. I was like, damn, you know, what if it's not gonna live up? Because I literally watched Top Gun and then walked to go see this. Or I walked home. I got an Uber to, work to see this. I went there and watched it. I was like, fuck me, dude. I walked in. So I got to the theater a little late, so I missed all the ads. But I walked in, and all of a sudden, I just like as I walk in, I just hear the. Doom. At the beginning, and I'm like, "Huh," because it does that, you know, whole beginning. And then, highway to the danger zone starts playing. I'm like, "God damn it!" They fucking nailed it again. I hate them for this. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you guys. This is too good. It's just, yeah, this was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to watch this movie. Music was good yet again. The, and I love the thing. The, uh, one thing that it made me think about is after we left the movie, like this is called Top Gun colon Maverick. I wonder how long until we'll get like Top Gun colon Rooster or. <laughs> Entirely possible. Or what if we get the one about his dad? Uh-huh. Um, Entirely possible. But who would but, Tom you know. Cruise allow to play Tom Cruise's dad? A CGI aged up Tom Cruise, of course. <laughs> no, I swear to God, if Tom Cruise plays his dad, I'll be upset. Um, but no, I mean, it's just, you know. This movie's a lot of fun. I don't know if there's much for me to talk about because, like, it's essentially the same points as the first one for me. Outside of that, I think they handle certain things better. 
because time has gone on. Like the love interest makes more like it kind of works a little bit better in this. It does. I I also like who it is too because she's alluded to in the first movie and then That's, here she is 40 years yes. later. Hey. I'm like I was like Oh, if I if I didn't watch Top Gun right away, I would not have gotten that. <laughs> like if I didn't watch these back to back, would have completely gone over my head. Mm-hmm. But no, I literally watched it and then like an hour later I went to watch this. I was like Oh, okay. <laughs> I see what you did, movie. I appreciate it. So, That's yeah, cool. I just I don't know what else to add. I I, I like I know it's kind of weird, but like I don't know what to add to this because like it's there's a lot to this, but like it's tough to talk about in the sense that like I it's it's a lot of the same points you would have for Top Gun. Um, Mm -hmm. and (laughs) we just, we just covered Top Gun. Um, and this kind of works as one of those like really good sequels that carries the weight of the first one really well, continues the story really well. And this unironically could be put into what I would consider the perfect sequel box. Um, you know, with like Empire Strikes Back and Shrek 2. Um, yeah, it takes everything from the first movie and does it so much better. Yeah, and the characters don't feel like they've regressed. So, like, Tom Cruise doesn't feel like he's regressed as a character. He does feel like he's developed further, mm-hmm. but he still has flaws. Yeah. Um, and I, I like that his flaw in this movie is the his, his problem from the last movie. Like, it, because of the events that happened in the last movie, it is now causing him the problems that he has now. The, yeah. I my my one complaint that I do have I do love this movie a lot it's great my one complaint is the mindset change like I know that's kind of how it always works with Tom Cruise in these movies like he's like I'm gonna do the impossible and then he does it but even though he broke a million ru- rules to do the impossible there's no consequences and in fact everything that he aims for is there to begin with like the the whole front of this movie is Tom Cruise going. Just let me do it. Let me do it. Just let me do it. And they're like, no, you're going to teach it. And that's that. And then we get to the end of the movie and there he is. He's doing it. Yeah. It it just like, I feel like if they really wanted it to be like a very good lesson, it's like, sure. He could demonstrate that it's doable, but then his kid, the ones that he's teaching are the ones who are going to do it. And then to end the movie, like, I I already know what the things that I would change myself because I've thought this through a little bit, but it's still fun and I like it. I like it a lot. It's, I mean, it's a good fucking movie. So, and like, it's got a lot of points to it. And I agree that there is some, uh, some definite things where it's like, (sighs) do we, do we need that or do we not need that? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But the, I mean, Go ahead. It's funny enough because I feel like the thing that kind of holds this movie back a little bit is the fact that it is Maverick's movie and it's aimed from Maverick's perspective. And it ultimately is him being the hero at the end of the day. Like, yeah. I, 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 I think that's the part that holds it back. If, if they were, if it somehow was him letting go and moving, passing it on to another generation, I think that would have been better. Um, uh, But we know just off of Mission Impossible and the story with, um, well, not the story, just like what ended up happening with uh, Jeremy Renner in that series. Like, it was supposed to be a passing up at the time, and then here we are to Mission Impossible 6, part 1. And Yeah, and he's, he's, you know, coming out with number 7 here. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, no, he's and yeah, it's Mission Impossible Seven, whatever movie it is, part one, and then there's gonna be Mission Movie Eight, which is part two. So <laughs> that yep. yeah, but still, it, 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 I I would I recommend watching this a hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, personal opinion, it's it's on level with the uh, the first one. So, and I like the um. The moments of stress that we get, the tension, the um, like will they, won't they moments that we have as well. It's just, 
I think the one scene that I was a little disappointed by ultimately, if I had to compare them directly, would be the, the fighter pilot football. It was it was fun, but it wasn't as fun as the volleyball scene, you know? Oh, agreed. <clears throat> so other than that, top quality. Watch this movie. So popcorn times? And popcorn times. Spoilers? Okay. So for me and my popcorns, I'm gonna give this movie a... I'm torn between a nine and a nine and a half. So I think I'll just go with a nine and a half. Round it up a little. Uh -huh. An imperfect ten. <laughs> no, it's just you know where I'm gonna vote. So now it's an it's an imperfect ten. Yeah, so yeah, it's you're a right. Ten and and uh huh. Because I can't give it less. So yeah, I mean I can give it less. I don't mind. I can be that dick. <laughs> so there we go. Top Gun Maverick. All right. For anyone who doesn't want spoils, get the hell out of here. I don't know if there is much to spoil, though. That's the thing. It's, it's a fucking fighter, fi uh, fighter movie, so, you know. <laughs> I can find some things to spoil. Like I said, there is... I want to talk about... Oops, I'm going to thing here really fast. Uh, I do want to talk about some changes that I would have made. Because, you know, oh, I man. am a fantastic movie person. And I clearly know what I'm talking about. God damn it. Here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. Steven, you know, these never end well for either of us. No, I know. So I'm just going to kind of play kind of. Blaze through the movie really fast. What happens actually? So there, the movie starts with the fighter, the the super jet, with the Mach ten practice where they're trying to develop a plane that will fly a jet that will fly at Mach ten, and they do it until he tries to fly above Mach ten and it crashes. And then, um, he was gonna be discharged, but Iceman saves the day again, and now he's teaching at Top Gun, but he doesn't know he's gonna be teaching until he gets there. Ah ha ha ha. Um. We start to meet the class, and then immediately we get fun, fun jet sequences. I really liked the, you're going to learn what it is to be a fighter pilot kind of training that they had. Right. <clears throat> that was a lot of fun. And I liked that right at the very beginning there, we got to see the big character moment for Goose, which was he he will dive in and save the day because he doesn't want to lose people because, you know, he lost his father at a young age. Rooster. Rooster, sorry. I was thinking of Goose when I was thinking the sentence. But yeah, Rooster, when he flies in and saves people and then ends up losing and having to do push-ups because of it. And then um, the movie progresses where we get to see all the different training sequences for the different things that they're practicing on. And it's all cool. I like the high G stuff that we get. We learn that the they have to push things forward a week. So then it's like, oh my God, we got added pressure and tension. And then at one point... Um, Freaking Iceman dies, which is sad, yeah. but it was cool to see Val Kilmer, even with all of his real life problems that he has actually in this movie and speaking and it was, it was nice. So, yeah. um, we got that and, um, he dies, the funeral happens and the, the people, the instructors at Top Gun are like, Hey. We're taking over. You're out of here. You're grounded now that Iceman's gone. And they start changing the mission parameters. Like, if we do it this way and then we do it this way, everything will be fine. But the kids are like, we're going to die. They're just going to kill us. So then Maverick goes in a jet, steals it, and uh, flies and does the practice course and proves that not only is it possible, it's doable with 15 seconds to spare. Uh, and then is told that, hey, you're going to be leading it. Pick your people who are flying with you. He picks uh, Phoenix and Bob to fly with behind him as his wingman, I believe. And then in yeah. the other group, it's Rooster with um, Fanboy? Uh, uh, fanboy and... Um, payback? Or, uh, yeah, Payback. Yeah, I think... Yeah, those two. 
So yeah, and then um uh Hangman will be on um the like backup yeah. essentially. And then Hangman and everyone else is on standby. The other six. I remember yeah. they are. <laughs> uh and the mission goes okay. Starting off, I mean Rooster's having a little problems at the very beginning until he finally um essentially stops thinking and just does it. Um, Tom Cruise and his, and Phoenix, they do everything perfectly, get out, no problems. Roosters has problems, but you know, he's able to sink the shot anyways, like, uh, Star Wars style. He felt it. He used the force. And, right. <laughs> uh, then they fly away and battles happen and it's like, oh, craziness. Oh no, what's going to happen? And then Tom Cruise saves Rooster and then ends up getting shot down. And then Rooster comes back and saves Tom, but then ends up getting shot down. And then together they steal the plane. An F-14 from the first movie. Uh-huh. And then they fly away together into the sunset up until After they... taking out two other things. Making generation Maverick fighters. <laughs> a ace pilot because he's taken down five planes. Um, so he's now considered an ace. Mm -hmm. Um. So there's that. There, there was um, one thing I actually found kind of interesting, that real world bit of knowledge there. And that in the last 20 years, apparently Hangman is the only person to have gotten a kill when it comes to fighter, like dog fighting. Yeah. And that, so I was like, okay, so in 20 years, there's only been one dog fight that's had a confirmed kill. That's pretty interesting. And then to carry it even further back to like Top Gun one. And it's like in the last 40 years, there's only been like six total dogfight kills, and five of them are Tom Cruise. <coughs> mm -hmm. I think this. Tom Cruise. I think it's more than that. I miscounted how many people died in Top Gun, like the original Top Gun. I think other people killed some people. So no, no, it, it was those. Like he took out three, and I think the last one bug off. Ice Man didn't get any. Ice Man had gotten one. I'm pretty sure he killed somebody. <laughs> or at least shot down a plane. But, um, yeah, so I thought that was interesting. But, yeah, then Tom Cruise ends up getting the ace. And, yeah. My, um... And then the, um... Then they get the photograph at the end of the movie, which is, like, the character problem, the big conflict from the movie, is then immortalized. And uh, we're friends now picture at the end of the movie. Which I thought was cool in some ways where, where originally it was, it was uh, Maverick and Iceman and they were smiling and shaking hands, but then it switches to Maverick and Rooster, which I thought was nice, but at the same time, they're not quite the same. I mean, yes, they are the same, but they're different, <laughs> you know, different characters, different conflicts. Yeah. Same and all wrapped up in a nice little picture. Oh, it was cute. Um, So the things that I would have changed. <laughs> you, you said you were going to be quick about that, by the way. That was only like five to eight minutes. <laughs> yeah, I think we we're pushing ten. Um, the thing, the only, the only thing that I would have changed was yeah. I would have not had Tom Cruise be the lead pilot. Oh, I, I can agree to that. Uh, um... I, I would have rather have Tom Cruise have had Hangman's position. I know it doesn't quite work. For no, what? that wouldn't work as that because he wouldn't be able to be Hangman. <laughs> like the um, because ultimately Hangman gets his character development in that last scene where he doesn't leave people out to hang on their own. He comes in and saves them and saves the day. It's like, oh, my goodness, it's friendship now, even though it's still like cocky friendship. Like, yeah, yeah, I saved you. <laughs> but still, <coughs> um. What I mean by that is I would have had probably I would have had Hangman be the lead person and he comes in to fly in and does all the stuff and roost and so it's Hangman with Phoenix and Bob and then um Rooster with the other two. And right. everything happens the same. Everything happens the same. Like 
Hangman does the thing. Shot works fine. Rooster comes in, has his problems, but he figures it out. And he does the thing just totally fine. They're flying away. And then Hangman, instead of letting Rooster die, saves, flies in because he's no longer going to be that dick. Even though he didn't really have that character moment yet. You know? But is it was his character moment was when he saved the day anyways. So, um... I don't know. We send Hangman to save Rooster, and then Rooster comes in and saves Hangman. They somehow figure out how to fly the F-14 out to save the day, and then Maverick flies in and saves the them. The thing when about escaping. that is they would not be able to fly the F-14. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> no, no, there's a guarantee, because they've never flown a fucking F-14. Only reason why the F-14 works is because Maverick is there. Yeah. Like, that's the only way that plane takes off. Then we because change Mav it from has... them stealing an F-14... To the new fifth generation fighter. <laughs> but then they they can get it off the ground, but they still don't know how to operate it completely. They wouldn't be able to get it off the ground. Shh, it's fine. See, no matter magic. what, you run into the same you run into the same issue if they don't fly a plane that they've flown before. You know what I mean? Um, it's movie magic. It's fine. I don't give a shit. We're not fucking Will Smith in this with an alien aircraft. <laughs> Just saying that right now. Like, the reason why the F-14 works so well is because if you've seen Top Gun, you know that's exactly what fucking Tom Cruise was flying in the first one. He's gotten five confirmed kills in an F-14. He really has, which is <laughs> shocking. <laughs> uh, you got anything else? I think this week's gonna be a short week, but I think it's just because like it's the same like these are the same movies, just kind of different, you know? Slightly updated. Yeah, and, and it's not a problem with it. And I know it's like it's kind of a weirdly short week for us being on time too. But like I think that kind of goes to say also that like these movies, like a lot has already been said about them. You know what I mean? Like I mean yeah. They're fucking awesome. <laughs> There, a lot's been said about these movies. A lot could be said about these movies. But once you say it about the first movie, you've said it about the second movie. Because they're yeah, the same movie. Much. Yeah, it's just with slightly different things here and there. Mm -hmm. So, amazing soundtracks, amazing um, visuals, and just fun fucking time all, all around. So, way to the... <laughs> so yeah i guess we can call it there sure spoilers we're done here we're moving on we're uh going to the news on the news beep, 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 beep. Woo! so um lots of random news the first one that i wanted to talk about this made me laugh i i couldn't help but laugh there's a there was there's been a result for the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard case. Yeah, and it's actually kind of shocking. I like I feel like it's it 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 to me it sure it could be kind of shocking. But it, well, I'll explain why it's shocking though once yeah, you explain so, what happened. Like what ended up ultimately happening at the end was they came out with a conclusion that yes, both people were actually defamed from everything that happened. Johnny ends up ultimately making about $15 million from what's going on as a payout for what happened. And Amber Heard gets about $2 million for a payout for her defamation. But to me, how it feels ultimately at the end of the day is they spent three weeks, three, four weeks going through all of this inner gossip and drama and like letting everything out of the bag, letting all the dirty laundry air essentially. And then it's like, eh, you're both right. Well, it's been what exactly I said from the get-go of all of this, is that they're both shitty people. Yeah. So. But ultimately, um, I guess the case swings more towards Johnny Depp winning since he ends up winning more money. Yes. Um, and on top of that, like, the reason why it's shocking that Johnny won the case is because Amber won it in the UK where it's easier to prove def uh defamation um in america it's a lot fucking harder mm -hmm. and johnny won it here which some people are saying is maybe a bit 
patriarchal, and I kind of am inclined to agree a little bit because some of it is like, I don't think Johnny should have been awarded the money, but this was more, uh, this, in my opinion, was more trying to win the court of public opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I'm not hundred percent sure how to feel about it. So yeah, it, but it's, fi it's finally fucking over and I, God, I hope we never have to deal with it again. Just wait until next year where we get to have all the Trump cases. <laughs> God, I hope not. Yeah, probably. Honestly, at the rate that it's going, we'll never have those Trump hearings. But <laughs> either way, uh, let's see here. Other things to talk about. Uh, Owen Wilson is going to have his own superhero movie. I don't know what movie. It's called uh, Secret Headquarters. And it's going to be on Paramount+. Plus. Hmm. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Let's see. Uh, bah, 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 bah. The Boys. Uh, the next season of The Boys is coming out, I believe, this Friday. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. So if you like that show, be prepared. It starts, which is cool. That's going to be fun to watch. Um, the third episode of Obi-Wan dropped. That's been okay so far. Yeah, this episode was fucking insane. I loved it. Yeah, it was cool. It was very cool. <laughs> this episode is everything that most people who think about Obi-Wan would kind of want, I feel. At least a good start to what they'd want. Agreed. And then, let's see here. Um, yeah, no. I haven't really seen anything else that's caught my attention. I mean, the Orville has another season coming out soon. But not many I think people. it just launched. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I actually started watching the Orville because I've seen all the Star Trek, so might as well watch the Star Trek parody. Okay. The part is pretty good. Yeah, I'm on. I'm only on episode five so far of the first season, and it's it's a little it's okay. It's a little slow to start, but certain characters have more funnies than others. But it has a lot of the same like Star Trek morals, like. They, I feel like they're a little ambitious because their fourth episode was the like a Star Trek court scene where it's like, oh, you know, you have to go to court to prove something very human and very like on point and on topic is happening. And they do it very early on. Usually in Star Trek, that's like a season three, season four thing that they do. <clears throat> yeah. Still, um... Other things. <laughs> next month's movies? We got next month's movies. Yeah. Let's talk next about Next month's them. movies is a weird thing. <laughs> um, so, what we're starting out with is we're going through the rest of the Jurassic Park movies that we have not done. So, next week, Jurassic Park, which I can't fucking wait to watch Jurassic Park, okay? Because I'm sorry, it's going to be a 10. I talked about it. It's going to be, I'm sorry, before we go into it, it is arguably a perfect movie, okay? And this is a movie Steven may even give a 10. It still um, stays up to date, so. Yeah, this could be the Steven's 10 of the year. We'll see. Um, it could easily be your 10. We'll see how um, I feel it's, when I watch. Like, if I'm angry when I watch this movie, it probably won't be a 10. But <laughs> please be in it. Like, just, like, smoke a little... Zen out a little bit before watching it, please. Um, then it's the uh, the Lost World Jurassic Park. That's um, number two, right? <laughs> yes. Um, and then we're gonna go the week after that is Jurassic Park three, um, and Jurassic World three Dominion. Um, after that we're doing Toy Story and Lightyear. Um, and then as Steven said, Crank and Crank two because we had that fucking argument last week, so. <laughs> Can't believe that's what we're doing, but we're doing it. It's really so. just out there. It has nothing to do with all of the other movies at all. I mean, nope. this is Toy Story with dinosaurs, unless there's a dinosaur in Lightyear. We're doing Lightyear because, you know, it came out. It's coming out. So. Yeah. <laughs> and Toy Story. We haven't done Toy Story 2 yet, have we? I don't think so. We. I think we've done what 3 do we and do 4. With... Did we do 3 and 4? Okay. Don't remember. Don't check the facts on that. Because, watch, we accidentally did one and we don't know it, so we have to switch it like we did that one week. Which that is was... easy, because we at least got two others I think we need to do. But, anyways, that's the plan for next month. I only see Toy Story 4. So, 
I don't, we haven't done three yet either. Yep. Cool. So we're doing one, we've done four, and then we have two and three later. All right. Breaking crazy. <laughs> it's going to be such a dumb way to end the month. <laughs> Uh, hey, <laughs> I don't remember which one of us said we were going to do it that way, but we did it. So it's here. It's, it's what we're doing. So. It's happening. Uh-huh. <laughs> Better or worse. <sighs> How are we almost halfway through the year? <laughs> I know. I was thinking about that yesterday. It's Our fucking... halfway point is going to be crank, isn't it? Yes. Fuck. Our halfway through the year is fucking crank. <laughs> happening. <laughs> it's not changing. That's what's happening. What that's doing? that's how you know it's real quality. We're halfway through the year and we decided to celebrate with Crank. <laughs> we don't not we haven't watched enough shit this year. Let's be real, we haven't. This year has actually been very kind to us. <sighs> Compared to the last two years. Yeah. Especially last year. Like, the 2020 was a year that we kind of chose some of the shit, you know, it's, that it, we slogged through. It feels hard to believe that we watched Mulan this year. Right? That feels like ages ago. But yet, it feels crazy that we're this far into the year at the same time. Yeah. Like, the beginning of this year feels so far away, but, like, it feels like it was yesterday. Uh, time. So. It's wibbly and wobbly. I hate it. <laughs> All right, let's call it quits. We're done here. All right. Yeah. Uh, like stuff, do all the things. And uh, we'll see you next week. Or, you know. Some Jurassic. Even though they're not Jurassic era creatures. Shut up. <laughs> All right. We'll see you later. Bye, everybody. Bye.